Good day, guys. So, um, I have, well, great intentions to try to show you something today. So hopefully we will see this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in a heli here so that we actually have a link. And um, we'll make sure that comes up. Shall we double check that? Yep, we have kind of everything coming up and I'm just going to wait for this bi-directional speed controller to kick in. It always takes a bit of time for the voltage to appear. Well, there we go. So essentially, I have a heli with um, a um, Scorpion speed controller in it and Rotoflight version 2. And over here on the desk over here, I have my X20 looking a little bit dusty, probably needs a clean, but too bad you get the dust and all. But I kind of wanted to show you what I've been up to. So if we go across over here and pop into RF2 Ethos, we have a connection. Now, you'll notice we've got all our things have pretty little pictures on them. I think those look quite cool. And if we check preferences, we now have the option over here to set either a small image, text or large image. If we click on text, I'll show you what happens. We'll go back to the main menu. We just got simple textual entries for the nav. And we have large images and small images. I tend to prefer the small image size because, well, I just think it kind of fits and does what it's meant to do. Now, obviously, within all of this, we are able to do things like go into PIDs, um, and in fact, pretty much any setting. And I kind of wanted to show you what I've got here, is if I take my switch on the side here, you can't actually see I'm pressing it, but if I toggle the switch, we're immediately reloading between the various sections and loading different PIDs off the flybarless unit. That's very, very handy, um, because obviously when you're doing lots of tuning, you can get along and do that. Um, what else do we have? We have help. Help with Ethos 1.510. You can just about see it in here. You've actually got a scroller. I wonder if I can show you. There's not enough text really, but there's actually a scroll bar here. And what that means is on certain pages, maybe, I don't know, uh, shall I see if tail wrote or I'll try governor. Check the help manual on it. There you go. We can scroll up and down, which is also kind of cool because obviously we can put more text in. You will also notice for anyone who's been following, we have a QR code which you can scan and that will take you to the link to the direct link on the manual for what that help is related to. Now, what else? Speed controller. I really wanted to actually show you this. Now, we've got a speed controller setting over here where you will notice we have Scorpion, YGE and Hobbywing. Currently, YGE is the only one not working. Um, I do have plans within the next few days to get that working. But um, I'm going to demo the Scorpion one for you. And you'll notice when we try connect, we're just going to sit there loading, loading, boom. And we have a message saying, please power cycle the speed controller. And the reason is Scorpions tend to want you to basically initialize into the correct mode at the right time. So you kind of, you've got to almost get into config mode at power up. So I'm going to do that now is just power cycle the speed controller. And we will wait for that to come back. And all things being good, this should then pick up and switch across to the configuration. However, timing is critical and occasionally we have to do this twice, which I'm actually glad it's showing you here because you're seeing it because I'll do this again. It all comes down to timings and we will hopefully get a connection. There you go, second time around worked. Um, I don't know why it does that, it's just something to do with the um, Scorpion controllers. They tend to be second one I find in 80% of the times works, first time doesn't, don't know. Main thing is now basic limits and advanced setup. All of this is now working, we can kind of reset pretty much anything you want on this. You know, it's as you would get, well, pretty much in any speed controller, you know, save the settings, boom, off you go. And that's writing it through rotor flight onto the speed controller. And every single one of these menus now works. So you have the pleasure, if you're all wired up, of being able to configure your speed controller. Um, now, as I said, Hobbywing version 5 is already supported too. The only one not working is YGE. Um, but I suspect within two days that will be working because I've managed to procure myself 
the YGE speed controller to do some development on. So, um, what else? I don't know, probably lots of you guys have already seen. There's context sensitive help on pretty much every value. If I click onto that, you'll see you've got help text, which tells you how and what to do. We can open up menus and set defaults. We could even enable a slider if you really wanted to, where you can move things like that around. I'm going to set that back to default because this is not my heli. It's a friend's who I borrowed so I could develop the Scorpion stuff. And off we go. So that's probably about all I want to show you at the moment. Um, I think we're getting pretty polished. Um, this thing's going to, well, for the 1.510 release of Ethos is going to be pretty, pretty good. I'm really looking forward to it. So now that's about it. I'm going to unplug the heli and I'll let you watch just for example what actually happens. We've unplugged the cable, telemetry lost and give it a few seconds and it's going to go, oh, I don't have a connection and start timing out. There you go, waiting for link. And it will sit there, sit there, sit there. And eventually it's just going to exit the menu and go back to the main page because, well, you can't do anything. There's no point bogging up resources. Um, yeah, then... There's one other thing on the widget. The widget has changed quite significantly. So in the configure widget, I've taken away the ability to just use the rotor flight governor. And things have been changed to use a triggers value with an arm switch and an idle up switch and a delay before active. The reason for this is ultimately that for many people, you're not using the rotor flight governor, for example, on the nitro guys. And, you know, and it kind of trying to force people down a particular model wasn't working. So I've made this a little bit more generic, where obviously you can now set when it's armed, disarmed, and then hold. Um, you've got battery configuration, LiPo cell count, when to do alerts, whether or not you play alerts on low voltage or just fuel, etc. All of that's there. Switch announcements. Basically, to make life easy again, rather than having to set up within Ethos all the switch announcements, you basically, within just the widget, can define every single value. Um, so if it's an idle speed low, medium or high, etc., you just set the switches and off you go, and it will kind of do pre-built audio announcements for you. Governor, oh, sorry, telemetry announcements, that's the other one. So you could, for example, assign a switch and it will announce the voltage or the RPM or the current fuel or the link quality, speed controller temperature. You know, all of those values can be read out quite happily. Um, what else? Governor announcements. By default, these are all on. Maybe you don't want them all on. You can turn off individuals. Um, and this is if you're using the rotor flight governor. Essentially, all it's doing is telling you that if I'm in this state, actually tell me. Um, and I prefer it that way. Customize display. Link mini boxes. So you'll notice over here we have these tiny little boxes. Well, some people love them. Me, I'm not so big a fan of them because I kind of feel they are just too small to look at while I'm flying. So I tend to just set mine to timer. And as you can tell, just the timer. Kind of easy. Um, what else yeah we've got advanced settings lots of things you can do there key one you can set whether you're using rotor flights governor or if you're using an external governor we've got things like temperature conversions where you can automatically convert from centigrade to fahrenheit etc um, which can be handy in certain edge cases um, voltage you have a sensitivity medium high low well this is going to trigger how aggressively the voltage is alerted. Um, it's nothing more than that. It says that basically it calculates based on the fact I've got a 6S pack what the minimum voltage is. And if your sensitivity is set to high, it will trigger the alerts, you know, when you're still quite full. If they set to low, it's going to trigger them when you're quite low. Um, SAG compensation. This is a time in seconds. And what this is doing is essentially saying, well, my voltage has to be lower than a certain threshold for more than five seconds before I bother telling you. Gimbal monitoring is an interesting one. So this monitors the positions of your stick. You need to set the order that your channels are running in. But essentially what it does, it says, don't what suppress an alert if my stick is greater than the percentage that is given. And this, this 
can stop false alerts when you're doing aggressive 3D. So your alerts will only occur essentially when you're cruising as opposed to doing hard 3D. You know, it works quite well. Um, but again, this is completely up to the end user. Um, head speed, alert on RPM difference. So this can actually be quite handy for debugging governor issues. And if your governor is not managing to keep up. So when this is set to be on, you can specify a percentage at which the head speed, a change in head speed or a difference in head speed, in which case it will read out the RPM. So if you're doing hard three and your or hard 3D and your head speed drops, it's going to turn around and tell you, oh, this is my new head speed. And it can kind of flag up if maybe your governor needs a bit of tuning. Um, what else? We have telemetry filtering. Built into the widget is a Kelman filter. So you may want high, medium or low filtering. Typically low is more than adequate, but maybe you've got a noisy sensor to your call. Announcement interval, that's things like how often it repeats an alert when you're in an alarm state. Um, 30 seconds is conservative and works. And then finally, calculate fuel locally. Maybe you've got a speed controller that doesn't have a current sensor in it. Um, and as a result, you actually just want to still get a fuel meter. Well, turn on the calculate um, fuel meter or fuel locally and you will get a estimate on what the fuel is. It's not as good as a current sensor, but it's not bad either. Yeah, so there you go. It's um, a little bit of where we're at. It's um, 1510 is going to be a big release all round. Um, hope you enjoy.